Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is episode number 30 and uh, in this episode I really want to show you real quick here um, one technique that I've been using quite a lot lately and uh, you can see some examples here on the, uh, in the screen and uh, pretty much it's how to sketch um, how to sketch with just one value, right? And the reason I really like this technique is because it kind of simplifies um, it, it, it kind of makes you makes you simplify your idea uh, in terms of the lighting and the value composition and uh, everything that you're gonna have in the image. And I think that's very, very, very useful because sometimes we tend to overcomplicate things, especially in the beginning stages, like how many lights you're gonna have and the colors and you know all this sort of stuff. And uh, with this technique, I find myself just kind of. Um, simplifying things and thinking about the composition and the value composition and how the light uh, is going to be in the image and also how how much of the distribution between all the things that are going to be all the elements that are going to be in shadow and which elements are going to be in light um, i'm a firm believer that you should have one or the other being dominant in your image so whether it is a lot of um, your image is going to contain all the elements is going to be mostly in shadow like for example this one over here or uh, most of your light is going to be hit by direct light um, in this case over here so um, that will help you kind of distribute that in your image and that means for example in this case here on the top right um, where most of everything is going to be in shadow uh, that means that your value range from, let's say, zero, which is pure black or the darkest value that you're going to have in the image, and 100 being white or the whitest uh, or the brightest value that you're going to have. That means that in this image, the the bigger range is going to be in my shadows. Uh, so I'm going to have the most information there. And pretty much all, my, uh, all the things, all the elements that are going to be in light are going to be pretty much blown out. So that means that I'll have less information there and more information in my shadows and vice versa um, if I do it the opposite way. All right. So um, I'm going to show you uh, the video process of how I came up with this with these sketches here. And these are super quick. Like I'm not thinking too much about the details. I'm not thinking about color. I'm just thinking about how the value composition is uh, set up in the image and how the lighting is going to be. Uh, but first, before I show you that, I want to do kind of like a live one so you kind of can see what the process is, is like, right? So I have here already set up and you can start with something like this or you can start with just a blank canvas, which is kind of like what I did for this one over here, as you can see in the time lapse in a few minutes. But if you have something like this, and this is a screenshot, um, of my 3D software using one of the key batches uh, Asian temple pieces um, and I kind of wanted to do that because this is another way that you could do it if you have something model already or if you have let's say a sketch like this or if you just line up not liner um, you can definitely do it like this um, but if you have the means to, to get something real quick in 3D just to kind of set up uh, your scene and that way you have some sort of base structure to kind of uh, do this on top um, you know I'll, I'll always go this way because I find that it's just a little bit easier and it's more uh, structural and concrete um, in what I'm doing now this this most of the time works with like actual structures stuff uh, but if it's like nature and that sort of thing um, you know I should just start with a blank canvas and, and just start sketching from there all right so I did a little bit of prep work already, which took me like just a few minutes just to kind of do a few uh, selection, save selections on my channels here. And I have a few selections already set up here that will kind of help me speed up the process as I work this. And uh, the reason I did this was because uh, there is this is a process that you can do multiple variations of it and having this safe selections will just help you uh, speed up that process to come up with you know multiple different lighting scenarios here uh, but right now I'm just probably just gonna do one just so you can see what the process is like and then uh, um, and then I'll show you the time lapse for, for the other ones so let's go ahead and 
just gonna go and work in black and white really and I'm actually just gonna do it with the sketch here I'm not gonna use the um, the screenshot model here it's gonna go here and I'm gonna start using my selections just to kind of uh, play with my lighting scenario here now in one layer I have my characters here and I'll let you have my my liner. I'm just gonna paint on top of that using my selections. So let's just say, for example, and I'm probably just gonna use just one brush. And I usually use a texture brush, but you can use you know whatever brush you want. And I'm gonna be thinking maybe the light is coming kind of like from the left, and it's maybe hitting some of the buildings and some of these um, characters here. Maybe something like this. Now, what I'm gonna try to do is just have just one value. I'm just gonna work with one value here. And um, the reason I do this is because, again, I, I want to simplify things and it's going to be very loose anyways. So I'm going to save this selection as the, as my ground. So I might be using that a lot. So once I save, once I have the selection that I want to save, I'll just click this button and it's going to create a new channel. And I will just have it saved right there. So if I deselect that, I control select my channel and I have my um, my selection there. And so uh, pretty much I'm thinking maybe these guys are being hit here and maybe some of this building on the right here it's gonna get hit by that light now in this case um you can maybe bring another value set just to kind of um Bring a little bit more of depth here, uh, but it's not completely necessary. Again, you still want to keep things fairly loose. There's another structure here. I'm not going to fully marry uh, my sketch here, but um, I'll use that as a reference. Now, as you can see, there's really nothing going on in the background. That's just mean that that doesn't mean that I'm not going to have anything in the final product. I just mean that whatever I have over there is going to be very low contrast. Um, and uh, it's not going to really bring much attention to the image. Uh, I want to keep my my attention here in this in this area here. In this area here so I want to have most of my contrast there maybe this one has been hit 
Although I kind of lose a little bit of the contrast with the characters. So I want to try to see and figure out if I could bring that back somehow. It would just be this way. This works very well, so I'm just gonna keep it here. That way, I can keep most of the like the silhouette of this of this structure intact. Maybe have some of a uh, shaft light here coming. And this could be one version of it. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. And let's do, let's do another version here. <clears throat> so I do like having the that diagonal light coming through um, somehow gotta make sure that that works <clears throat> I like that better actually there's like ruins and just like leftover buildings and stuff in the very background. Maybe now we could have some of the light hitting the. Maybe not. <clears throat> As you can see, these are done fairly quickly. I'm gonna do one mostly in shadow here. See how that comes out. I could do this, for example, for like 30 minutes, an hour, and I call it with a bunch of new, um, uh, just different uh, variations for this.
I still feel like there should be like some sort of indication of uh, structures and stuff um, here in the background. So sometimes when I uh, when I kind of like um, a lighting scenario, I kind of start building just a little bit on top just to kind of see if I actually like it. Uh, but I don't want to go too um, too detailed with it. I just want to kind of explore a little bit more of a range of values um, to kind of test it out. And see if that kind of works. And that way, you know, I can make a better decision later on. So um, you know this is this is the time and place to kind of make as many mistakes as you can, and um, you know this is the time for you to fail and kind of see what what works and what doesn't. Um, just you know you're not married to anything right now at this point. Uh, you just want to test the waters and see what ideas can can you come up with. Um, and then once you decide, then um, then you start fleshing out maybe a 3D model or you start, you know, lighting in 3D or, or making a tighter drawing and, and adding more values to, to the painting and that sort of thing. And um, that way you can take it up all the way up to final. But, you know, at this stage, it's just a matter of um, testing it and, and see what the, what the options um, are for, for your piece. All right. So, uh, now I want to show you, uh, I'm going to do a little time lapse of the other pieces that I did here and uh, that way you have a little bit more options to, to check out and, um, and that's about it. Um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below uh, or any comments and I'll see you guys on the next episode. While you and me repeat This bittersweet heat Is suffocating I'm waiting And always hesitating Kryptonite desires Set my heart afire Heart on fire Set my heart afire
sweet heat is suffocating. Oh.